Welcome to the New China Sports Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have an amazing show in store for you today. And on this episode of the podcast, we will talk about Tom Brady and his retirement and give you some of our favorite things about TB12. And we also go in, and I mean all the way in, on Brian Flores versus the NFL. Like, what's the point of the Rooney Rule? Seriously, because if people are going to be interviewed, as you mentioned, I'm just going to interview an an Asian candidate or Hispanic candidate or an African-American candidate just to interview them. Then what's the damn point of the rule, bro? There's absolutely no point to the rule. And the thing is, I'm very careful on this podcast. We really all are. I hate being the people who say, oh, it's racist. What are we going to do? And there's no like real response and there's no real plan or call to action. And um, this is not to make someone who is non-African American uncomfortable, but this is the reality of the situation. The NFL is 70% black. There are very few black executives. Well, there's only one full-time black head coach who's one of the most successful head coaches of all time. Why is he so successful? One, he was hired by very good ownership. Two, he was hired by a very good organization. Three, he had a damn good quarterback, right? We know if you're a good coach and you have good people around you, you can do it for a long time. Unfortunately, what happens with a lot of these black coaches, they go to these teams who have no chance of winning, i.e. David Cully, no chance of winning. You get fired after one bad season and you'll never have another opportunity to coach again. The guy that comes to mind for me is uh, Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell is a coach of the Colts. He leads them to damn near a perfect season. Peyton Manning leaves or Peyton Manning gets injured. They have one down year. He gets fired. Then Andrew Luck comes in. He gets a job with the Detroit Lions who have never done anything ever. He leads them to back to back to back winning seasons, nine and seven. He gets fired and they're really going crazy for Matt Patricia who does absolutely nothing. You're tuned into the new channel sports podcast, the ultimate sports talk podcast. What is good? This is the new channel sports podcast. I am here with the usual suspects. We have an amazing show for you. Before I get into all the things that we're into and all the things that we do, I got to introduce you to one of the hardest working men in the business, Mr. Showtime, Mr. I'ma rip this city, Mr. Big Low. What's going down, player? It's Big Low coming down in each time. Hey man, I'm good, man. It's, uh, the weeks have been good. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, you know, in the world of sports. You know, it's great to be on here with my partner, my ace, my Leo, my dude. Hey. You know, the phenomenal Chris. You know what I'm saying? So I'm ready to go, man. Let's rock. Yes, sir. Well, let me tell you about some of the platforms you can find us on. You can always check out our website, newchannelsports.net. That's new channel spelled N-U channelsports.net, where you can find our podcast. You can find articles on there as well. And you can also find our podcast wherever you listen to your podcast, Podbeam, Stitcher, Apple. We are there. You can also check out our lovely faces on Afro Vibes TV. Afro Vibes is an amazing platform. You can download the Afro Vibes app on your phone, on your tablet, or even on your television. They on television, bro. You can download the Roku or the Amazon Fire Stick. And also, we are on the Leeds Podcast Network. Every single Saturday, a new show drops. I'm going to get low on there one week. <laughs> low, you're going to get on the Leeds show, bro. I'm going to get you on there. But yeah, bro. it's an amazing platform where we're repping uh, the new channel sports show on the Leeds Podcast Network. Uh, that about covers everything that we do this week, or at least for this episode. O is out, so we will hold it down for him. And let's get into your favorite segment, my favorite segment, Headlines. It's time for... It's time for... Headlines. Headlines. Right now. All right, so headline number one, the Buffalo... I said Buffalo Bills. It's not the Buffalo Bills. (laughs) Headline number one, the Denver Broncos have just announced 
that they are selling their team, the owners, the Bolins, uh, ever since I believe the Bolin senior pass, there's been some issues. They haven't really figured it out. So now they are selling the team low. What are your thoughts on the Broncos selling their team? And do you have any owner you would like to see own the Broncos? Oh, man. Man, you put me on the spot. I did put man. you on the spot. I, 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 let me, before you answer, I don't have an answer either. But I will say this. There are no black owners in the NFL, right? It would be cool to get a black owner in there. I don't know who could do it. Maybe Puffy. Maybe Jigga. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I mean, you know, I think they tried. Uh, they tried to buy with the Carolina Panthers. You're right. You know, they did. so out. Yeah, they did, and it didn't happen. So if that same ownership group to, can can buy the Denver Broncos, that might be that might be something. But I do think that we need at least you know one black owner in the NFL. You know, there's there's if I'm mistaken, yeah, there's one. Uh, Middle Eastern owner, I think Shad Khan, he's uh, either Indian or Pakistani. So I think he's probably the only minority owner in the NFL. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure how accurate that is, but it'll be it'll be nice to have a, a black owner in the NFL on a football team. That that'll be huge. Hey, you know what? Matter of fact, The Rock, look, you've already you've already purchased. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you've already purchased the XFL, okay? And I'm excited to see how this going to go. So maybe come on with it, Rock. <laughs> come on with it with the Denver Broncos. I like that. I really like that you brought up uh, the Rock. And you also brought up Shot Khan. I think his name is Shot Khan. Um, I didn't think about him, but you're right. He is a minority owner. So I said black owner. I think a minority owner is fine. I would like to see a minority owner take over for the Broncos. Uh, headline number two. Don't know if you're watching over the weekend. Don't even know if you care. But we want to cover it really quickly. Uh, in men's tennis, Rafael Nadal won the Australian Open. Now, this is a big deal for this reason. Prior to him winning the Australian Open, he was tied with Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic for 20 uh, singles titles, um, major singles titles in tennis. So now he has 21. He has taken the lead. Uh, for me and Lo, Nadal's our guy, bro. I know Nadal's mean your dude. Uh, what do you feel about Nadal taking that one edge, taking that lead over Federer and Djokovic? If I'm being completely honest, you know, the, the heads of tennis and when it comes to men's tennis are those two gen are the, the, those three gentlemen, yeah. right? And almost it, it all it's like the really how important is it, right? Because it's the same two guys, really three, but it's it's the same two guys that are winning it. One's gonna lose, the other one's gonna win. Then the next time, that one's going to turn around and win. And then the other one's going to lose. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's almost a toss-up, right? You know, it's, it, it's like tennis, you know. One day That's one's going to lose, one day one's <laughs> going to pick it up. You know what I'm saying? It, it really is. That's exactly what it is. So for me, it's just like, hey, you know what? Both of them are great. Really, all three guys are great. You know, we include Roger Federer in that, man. But, you know, these are some great athletes. They're phenomenal. But these three gentlemen had men's tennis right now, and no one can seat them, you know, until <laughs> they can no longer play anymore. You're absolutely right. I don't know. We'll never see in our lifetime uh, three guys this good in one sport like this. This is ridiculous. If you don't watch tennis, that's cool. But these guys are just, they've been great since we were like young, bro. <laughs> I mean, they, they have Seriously. guys playing against them now who were kids watching them play and they're still beating them. Uh, that is incredible. Yep. So shout out to Rafael is, Nadal getting is. number 20. One And the final headline, and we're going to stretch it out. Normally, we don't do long headlines. We're going to stretch this one out a little bit. Final headline we want to cover. I think you know what this headline is going to be. Tom Brady, the GOAT, came out and confirmed what Adam Schefter and Jeff Darlington, I think is his name, just brought out too early. Like, come on, Adam. Can I say something real quick, love, before you go on this? Like, come on, Adam Schefter. This dude has been playing in the NFL for 22 years. You couldn't give him a heads up like, hey, I know this information. I'm going to come out for, with it an X day. If you want to come out before me, that's cool. Let's give him a heads up or something. I don't like he knows better than that, but I guess they just don't care. But shout out to Tom Brady um, for retiring 22 seasons, seven Super Bowl championships. Low. Just give me your thoughts or maybe if you want to, you don't have to. Maybe your favorite story of Tom Brady. I got one I want to give uh, after you give your thoughts. First of all, let, let me backtrack back to Adam Schefter, okay? Because and Ian Rappaport, because it's funny that you mentioned them and how the report came out too early. Because I was I was listening to a uh, another show, um, a local show, the local uh, Dallas one hundred three five fan, right? Uh, and uh, you know they played uh, they played some I guess some radio hosts that were pissed off at I think they were interviewing. Um, Adam Schefter, right? Yeah. And he has a habit when he gets that text of this breaking news, he like just hangs up. 
right? So let me right now, you and I are discussing, right? I'm like, hey, Chris, got to go, boom. I hand up the phone, I go and do what I got to do. So so they played the guy, the radio host, custom. I was like, oh, this guy's the biggest dick, and he's a douche, and he's all these things. He's like, man, that's super, supremely disrespectful, right? So if he could do that to a radio host, you know, to make sure that he's the first to headline whatever breaking news is happening, you obviously see, you know, that that's exactly what happened with the Tom Brady news. As soon as he got word, whatever that source was that came out and said, hey, he's retiring, he dropped everything he was doing. He didn't care whether Tom Brady had the opportunity to really announce or what have you. And then we just discussed it, right, on AfroVibes. I think it was you that mentioned, hey, you know what, this is not exactly confirmed, which it really wasn't. It was just the word got out, the source were out there. But Tom Brady, even I think as of yesterday, Tom Brady hadn't confirmed he's like hey you know what i'm still thinking about it there's still a lot of the process like i haven't made an initial announcement so that got me to thinking oh crap you know maybe he this dude might come back and play see, if you bring up a good point if today. we're doing i don't know if you uh-huh. watch that show around the horn on espn right now if yes. i was controlling i'd have gave you like 50 points because you hit the nail sure. on the head and honestly <laughs> i didn't hear about that story with the the radio show but that's like the perfect story to talk about who adam Schefter is and he has a job to do so i don't want to necessarily just bash him completely but for this specific thing like you mentioned like it's it's like come on discretion bro it's discretion it's very similar if me and you we talk we have a show if you have special news to drop on this podcast right it'll be crazy for me to come on but like breaking news from low you're like bro i didn't give you like what are you doing <laughs> and adam Schefter would not care bro Adam Schefter will no, tweet bro. breaking news about somebody having a baby. Like, that's like, he does not care. He will break the news. Uh, as long as he gets it first, he's happy to share it. And I think there's just something a little wrong with that. There, there is. And, and I can I can appreciate it because I know that, okay, when he says it, when Adam Schefter says it, it's usually law, right? It's, it's going to happen. If it hasn't happened already, it's getting ready to happen or whatever, right? So I, you, you can trust it. But it's just like, okay, well... You know, did you at least communicate with Tom Brady or the family? Be like, hey, like, I just found out. I'm let, just letting you know. Maybe not ask for permission. I'm just letting you know I'm getting ready to drop yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? So, we don't know. But uh, as far as Tom Brady goes, Let's do man, this. Let's go. do this. I messed up. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go sure, ahead sure. and end headlines. And we'll just make Tom Brady a top. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just do Let's that. Let's do it. Let's so do it. I like it. that I like was that. your headlines. And we'll make Tom Brady the first topic here. And we'll just go straight into it with Tom Brady. And uh, Lo, go ahead and give us that story or just your thoughts on Tom Brady retiring. So, my, you know, my thoughts, I'm, I'm not surprised uh, that he retired because one of my biggest things is I, I, kinda, I pay attention not just to the athlete, but, you know, their atmosphere, the team, the family. And for a number of years, especially after Tom Brady left New England, you know, the word has been out there that, you know, his wife, Giselle, has been a little frustrated and she's ready for him to retire. It's just like, Hey, you accomplished enough. You have a family. You need to come and perform, you know, your role as my husband and a father and all these things. It's time to come home. Like you quit playing pretty much. Right. Um, from my understanding, um, he came to, I think he moved to Florida initially on his own. Um, and I think this year in particular, he's kind of cocooned himself with, with football. Right. So I think she gave him, she was gracious enough to be like, Hey, you know what? These during the football season, this this is just you. Okay. So these last six months has just been Tom Brady focused on football and nothing else, you know, while she's, you know, performed um, her duties as a mother, a wife and that kind of thing. So I'm not surprised because it's been out there. She's ready for her husband to come back, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and spend time, you know, so I'm not, I'm not surprised at all. Um, but, I don't think that we need to wonder, hey, what else, what if with Tom Brady? Like he's legitimately accomplished everything he can accomplish, right? He's accomplished so much that I don't think there's going to be another quarterback in our lifetime outside of Pat Mahomes that might come close to his achievements, right? When you talk about everything he's earned, the yards, the touchdowns, the playoff wins, the Super Bowl appearances, the Super Bowl wins. I mean, I don't think we're ever going to see that again. So I don't think there's any need for us to play a what if because he still looks so good. He was still playing at an elite level this year, uh, this year, you know, after losing two other uh, LA Rams. There's no need for anybody to play a what if because he is the what if. Okay. He is that standard. Um, he set that bar so high. Now it's unattainable. I don't know that anybody else is going to be able to attain it. So my memories of him is always going to be 
you know, of him being um, very, very meticulous, being maniacal, being very, very competitive, right? Um, when you talk about someone who's always played with a chip on their shoulder, it's going to be Tom Brady, okay? And, and, and you can definitely put him amongst those athletes who have always played with a chip on their shoulder. Don't matter what it is. It could be he's slow. When you talk about Tom Brady is slow, get, get, guess what he's getting ready to do? He's going to run for a touchdown. He's going to run it in. He's, he's proving it, right? And, and you, he's you going to a perfect point. There's nothing <laughs> about this man that no. you say he can't do it. He's going to show you that he can do it. And I like that you bring that up about him. For me, what I will remember most from him is a lot of people, it's his selflessness, right? And he was he's in a position where he was able to be selfless, right? So, so many people say, oh, Tom Brady gave up money. Everybody should. Well, you got to realize Tom Brady's wife for many years made more money than him. Uh, she's not just a supermodel. She is one of the best supermodels ever, right? So it allowed him the opportunity to be able to take pay cuts because he won't worry about bread back at home. He had bread, you know, and he was able to do that to help the team get better. But even more so than that, you look at that last week of the regular season, how Tom Brady understood the incentives that Rob Gronkowski needed to hit his number. And he was able to do that. That's Tom Brady. He's a great quarterback, but he's so great. He knows every single thing that's going on. He's a guy. I'm going to be real with you. If me and you are on this podcast, I'll use another example, and you have to hit a certain incentive on words used, right? Let's say for this podcast, you're going to hit uh, 14,000 words used or something insane like that. After a while, I'm going to be quiet. I'm be like, my boy, Lo going to eat. He going to get his words, damn it. And, but that takes a certain sense to do that. And not everybody has that, that sense. And Tom Brady has that. And that's, for me, is the most important thing uh, that I take from his career and just watching him grow. He literally had three different Hall of Fame careers. He had the early 2000s, he had the middle 2000s, early 2010s, and then he had about 2015 and beyond. He played this last season. I love what you said. You said there's no what if to him because we all know he could still play. <laughs> like, bro, bro can still play today or next season he can play. Um, and he's, he's giving up the cleats, like you mentioned, to stay with his family, to grow and do all that. And finally, I, I do want to say this. It reminds me a lot of Tim Duncan. Remember when Tim Duncan retired, there really wasn't any vanity to it because he let us know too late. By the time we figured out he was retiring, it was like, dang, he's leaving. And that's exactly what Tom Brady wanted. I am of the belief now that he always knew he was never going to play the 45. So he said, yeah, 45 will be my last year. Everybody thought that he knew this year would be his last year. That's why we didn't give him the farewell. And um, he deserves every single thing. Everybody wants to call him GOAT, all that type of stuff. He's all of that in the bag of chips. Um, yeah, that's that's my thoughts on him. Definitely. Those are my thoughts on Brady. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting that you bring up the farewell. Um, and he stated on the podcast that he he shoots during the week that he did not want to do a farewell tour, right? Um, and he got that. And and can I ask you, you a question? About the, Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, Why yeah. do you think that is? Sure. Um, I, you know what? From what I understand, he doesn't really care about the accolades. You know, for him, it's the love of the sport, the purity of the game, and he plays it to win and be the best. Doesn't care about the fanfare, the accolades, all the all of that stuff, right? So I guess for him, it, it, and and maybe again, you know, it, when you go through things like that, you know, as an athlete who's you've given all to the game, maybe the it, it could have easily been a distraction, right? You know how he is. Tom Brady is very focused. He's about the details, and it's about the game, the game, and we're going to play the win. And if we're going to add this distraction of man, like this is my last year. This is my last time playing the Dallas Cowboys. It's the last time playing the Buffalo Bills or the who else does he beat up on the Miami Dolphins. Right. And you go through and you visit all these stadiums, you know, and everyone's going to do the I love you, Tom's and the TV show is going to do all the the memories of Tom's, you, you know, you know, and all these things. It does become a distraction. And there's also a huge emotional element that comes with that, too. So sometimes, you know. You probably don't want to experience some of those, you know, some of those emotions because they get, once again, they are going to become distracting. So he's not that kind of guy, you know, for him, it's just to go out there, be the best, leave it out on the field. You know, he doesn't really care about, you know, getting all that fanfare, you know, so um, and, and, and for somebody as great as he is, that's what us as fans and people who love the sport, we probably want to see. 
You know, you want to see that fanfare and, 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 and that farewell season. And, and hey, this was the last, last touchdown pass and this is the last yard. And he walks off and waves goodbye to everybody. You didn't, we didn't get any of that. that you didn't that's get the thing, any though. You feel me? I mean, as a fans, we wanted that. But I right. understand from his perspective, which is what makes what we talk about headlines so disturbing with um, Adam Schefter, is he didn't want that. He just wanted to have the narrative, hey, I'm retiring, I'm out. And y'all could even let this dude have that. Oh, my God. It's disgusting. As I, I want to admit that. It's disgusting, and people should know better. Um, let's transition to, I would say, the biggest news of the season so far. This is one of the most surprising, and oh, I shouldn't say surprising, but it is surprising things that I've seen in a while, and that is a guy that Lowe has been a fan of, and Lowe has called it for quite some time, and it's Brian Flores, who, for all intents and purposes, is a good head coach. He was fired undeservedly uh, from the Miami Dolphins, and once he was fired, everyone around the league, you know, insiders, analysts were saying, what a horrible decision by the, uh, by the Dolphins. He'll be hired immediately. And what's proceeded to happen is nine coaches have been fired in the NFL. Four of those positions have been filled. Four of those positions were filled by white men, right? Uh, no, uh, no black men, no minorities have taken those positions yet. There's still five still open. As we sit right now in the NFL, we have one head coach who is African-American. That's Mike Tomlin, who has never had a losing season. <laughs> so to basically, if you're a black coach, for what I'm learning, you have to be perfect. Not good. Not even like, ah, you can't be Brian Flores where you're taking a bad team and making them good. You got to be great. That's, that's nothing new. That's nothing new, right? And, 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 and with this and being what we are, you know, this is a black podcast. We are black men. So we're going to have to keep it real with this, you know? So, you know, it, it, it is what it is at this point, but it's nothing new. You know, everything that we have to do as black men, we have to be perfect, right? If we're not, if we ain't straight and narrow and we don't dot all the I's and cross all the T's, somebody's going to be picked over us. You know what I mean? Because because us forgetting to cross that and add that period at the end of the sentence, that's that's the difference between a lot of sometimes life and death. That's the difference between you getting a job and losing a job. That's the difference between you making uh, getting hired for for a coaching position. That's the difference for a lot of different things. You know what I mean? But let me go ahead and let you finish, man, before I, before I jump on this thing. Yeah, and, and just just to talk about the the story because we're, we're both chomping in the bit. So Brian Flores filed a lawsuit, I believe it was in the Manhattan District Court, it's in federal court, against the NFL and three football teams, at least of what I've seen so far, uh, the Miami Dolphins, the New York Giants, the Denver Broncos. His allegations against the Dolphins are really bad. Um, he's saying that, uh, one, obviously he was fired incorrectly, and then also Stephen Ross, the owner of the Dolphins, was incentivizing him to lose and paying him to lose, I think $100,000 per game, to lose games on purpose. And also, <laughs> on top of that, um, wanted him to have illegal conversations with Tom Brady, basically tampering and things of that nature. His allegations against the New York Giants are that he was never going to be the head coach of that team. They were essentially using the Rooney rule as a sham because he received a text from Bill Belichick, which at this point, I haven't read the allegations. I don't know if Bill Belichick sent the text on accident to the wrong Brian, but essentially... The text he gets from Bill Belichick is, congratulations, Brian, you're going to be hired as a New York Giants head coach. Immediately following that, it's like, my bad, you're not the right Brian. I meant Brian Dayball, who was the offensive coordinator for the Bills. The problem is, bro, 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 bro being Brian Flores, hadn't interviewed yet. So his interview was definitely a sham. And then his allegations against the Broncos were, he goes to interview for the Broncos, and unfortunately... These are allegations, right? So I'm only talking about the allegations in this complaint. The Broncos leadership comes in, including John Elway, and these cats are drunk, um, disheveled, an hour late to the meeting. This is not a good look for the NFL. So with low, everything I just told you, so I just want to be clear, everything I just read off were allegations. I'm not saying they're true. I'm not saying they're false. I just read the allegations, low just, I don't know, just start where you want to start, bro. <laughs> like, I'm going to pick it up, but start where you want to start with this because this is, for me, disturbing. But I'll let you go first. Like, you know, let's, okay, so let, let's start by, 
talking about the character of Brian Flores. And we already talked about the stuff with, you know, Tua and his quarterback and some of those things and what allegedly caused him to be fired, you know, by the Dolphins to begin with. Okay. His relationship with the quarterback and some of those things. But let's take it back to a discussion that we had about, you know, Bill Belichick disciples and their success or lack thereof as head coaches in the NFL. Okay. To date, the only two successful coaches right now, all right, are, and one actually wasn't even a coach, he was a player, all right? So the only successful coach right now, all right, and, and refresh me if I'm wrong, is Brian Flores when it comes to taking his team and having a winning record because the rest of them have had abysmal records. Yeah, I'm okay? saying, so Brian Flores, I think he has, I think he's 24 and 25. And then the only other guy that's had any type of success is uh <laughs> Bill O'Brien. So, but yeah, I mean, that's not a really good list you're looking at. It, it, it's, it's not. It's 24 and 25, but he's had two back-to-back winning seasons, right? 9 and 8 this year and then 10 and 6 last year, if I'm not mistaken. So, maybe so, he does have a winning record. I could be wrong on that. But basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so we'll, close. It's close. Absolutely. So, yeah. so when you look at what he's done to change the culture, remember, I, I have been speaking about this particular team. I liked what Brian Flores was doing since 2019 is when I've been talking about this. Okay, I loved what he was doing with the Dolphins. You saw that they were playing for this for this guy. He's changed the culture around, brought some players in there. And in one or two pieces, this team could become, you know, an actual playoff team, right? Um, nobody just wakes up out of the, you know, uh, wakes up out of sleep and makes these things up. I believe that most of, not all of these things are true. Most of these allegations are true. And this is coming from a man who was, you know, I, I believe, unjustly fired from his position okay he didn't break you know any kind of protocols the way our man john gruden did to cause him to be fired this was an, an unjust unjust firing and i was <laughs> this Can you imagine someone like john gruden <laughs> it's not funny but you're right he'd be fired and never thought about ever 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 again. Ever, ever again right yeah but this this thing is systemic, you know, and and it's just straight disrespectful when you talk about the, his interview with uh, the Denver Broncos, you know, for them to show up an hour late. Can you imagine if Brian Flores showed up an hour late to Ooh, an interview? He'd be killed, bro. He'd be killed. Oh, he'd be but killed. But the owners really and the GM point. and all that they show up. It, it was not. It was not a serious thing. Look, we always come to a point towards the end of the season when coaches are being fired. There's interviews happening. And you always hear it. You always see it on ESPN when you read these articles. Oh, such and such candidate was, you know, is going to be interviewed, you know, and it, and it, and it meets up with the Rooney rule. It's never a serious consideration. These, these, uh, um, these, uh, coaches of colors, ne- they're never going to be in serious condition, uh, in serious contention for the position. These GMs and these owners have already made up their mind. They're just picking up a Hispanic coach or a black coach to have an interview with or an Asian coach to have an interview with just to satisfy the rule. That's all it is. They're not in serious contention. Can I, can I say something, complete, bro? Because sure, go ahead. I, I, I want to really talk on that point. Like, what's the point of the Rooney Rule? Seriously. Because if people are going to be interviewed, as you mentioned, I'm just going to interview an an Asian candidate or Hispanic candidate or an African-American candidate just to interview them, then what's the damn point of the rule, bro? There's absolutely no point to the rule. And the thing is, I'm very careful on this podcast. We really all are. I hate being the people who say, oh, it's racist. What are we going to do? And there's no like real response and there's no real plan or call to action. And um, this is not to make someone who is non-African-American uncomfortable, but this is the reality of the situation. The NFL is 70% black. There are very few black executives. There's only one full-time black head coach who's one of the most successful head coaches of all time. Why is he so successful? One, he was hired by very good ownership. Two, he was hired by a very good organization. Three, he had a damn good quarterback, right? We know if you're a good coach and you have good people around you, you can do it for a long time. Unfortunately, what happens with a lot of these black coaches, they go to these teams who have no chance of winning, i.e. David Cully, no chance of winning. You get fired after one bad season and you'll never have another opportunity to coach again. The guy that comes to mind for me is uh, Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell is a coach of the Colts. He leads them to damn near a perfect season. Peyton Manning leaves or Peyton Manning gets injured. They have one down year. He gets fired. Then Andrew Luck comes in. He gets a job with the Detroit Lions who have never done anything ever. 
He leads them to back to back to back winning seasons, nine and seven. He gets fired and they're really going crazy for Matt Patricia, who does absolutely nothing. You have a guy there in Dan Campbell who is screaming, having weird things that he's doing and weird comments on his press. Everybody says, oh, wow, he's really special. He's really special. No, he's really unique for the Lions because he continues to lose. And you have Jim Caldwell, who I've never heard his name brought up as coach. He's really only had one bad season in the NFL when guess who was missing? His quarterback. So... The thing that annoys me most is, I don't like to sit up here and say, oh, Paul, woe is the black man here. But what's annoying is they're not getting the right opportunities. So we have the same situation when you look at someone like Colin Kaepernick, who made a statement. Agree with him, don't agree with him. But the fact is, he made that statement and he never played enough as a quarterback in the NFL again. Another team never picked him up. Brian Flores did this, understanding that there is a good possibility that he will never coach as a head coach in the NFL again. And for me, that takes guts. I don't know if I would do that because we both, we both have things we're really good at. Both you and I, if somebody told you, cause I know you love, you love working on your body. You love eating right. Like that's all very important to you. If somebody said, hello, you can't do that no more. I think if somebody said, I can't do it. I do no more. I'm gonna have, I'm they say it's on behalf of all the other African-American people. I'm like, well, they might have to wait because I don't know if I'm willing to do that. And Brian Flores has done just that. And for me, he deserves to be commended for that. Absolutely. I mean, look, Colin Kaepernick has already fallen on the sword. Um, and Brian, Brian Flores might be falling on the sword as well for other coaches because it, it's, it's, it's nuts, you know. And, and, and let's go ahead and just take it down to, you know, what it is and, and, and the way we see it, right? You don't see how many, okay, how many, how many black offensive coordinators are there in the league? Okay. How many of them are there? Most of the coordinators that you will see that are black, they're probably going to be defensive. So it's always that thing that, you know, uh, uh, oh, you know, Black people don't have the the smarts or the intelligence or the uh, imagination, you know, to you know, you know to be like great mathematicians or to be to run companies or to be CEOs or to be managers or to 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 be creative and run an offense because offense is like mathematics where defense is like I don't know reading or spelling or something like that like rudimentary. Shit. You see what I'm saying? So 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 you have that aspect. So I think there's that belief. And again, these are these are old white men running this stuff, right? These owners are old white men. It's a good old boys club, right? And, and the NFL is all about connections, right? When you see these coaches that undeservedly get these positions, a lot of times, you know, it's because there's a GM or an owner or whatever that has a relationship with somebody that brings in that coach who has no business having that, having that position. So you don't have that. Our black coaches in the NFL don't have that same pull. Okay, they don't have that same connection, or they may have that connection, but you know, well, we're gonna go with this guy because we're more comfortable. He's white. He looks like us. We can laugh at the same things and joke about the same things and make the same racist comments and jokes about it and drink the same beer and all that other. Shit. You know, it's, it's, it's that comfort. <laughs> Bro, I gotta edit this podcast, man. I gotta yeah, edit I, I feel this. You, I, I feel you, but it's just, it's the same. It's 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 there's comfort. Yeah. There's comfort. And and what annoyed me really and truly was seeing with the Dolphins. I think it was, it was the Dolphins. Or the Giants. I think the Giants, Giants put out a statement. Out statement. Yeah, they, they said, hey, you know, we hired the coach that was most right qualified for this exactly. position and all that. So I, I'll like, say you, you, you brought up a really good point. You talked about the, the good old boys club. You talked about the, um, you talked about the, uh, teams hiring who's comfortable. I look at a coach like Zach Taylor, who's now in the Super Bowl. So he's in the Super Bowl, right? And I look at the leash that he was able to get to have this opportunity. So, He has a really, really bad season, right? Where if that was a black head coach, he's fired. He doesn't get the opportunity to coach a Joe Burrow. He has back-to-back bad seasons. Yes, Joe Burrow gets hurt. My point is not hating on Zach Taylor at all. But my point is, if he's a black head coach, he doesn't get that opportunity. And you look at guys like Sean McVay, you look at guys like Kyle Shanahan, smart head coaches, deserve to be head coaches, but they still got opportunities really early on in their careers when they hadn't had a big darth of success, or I shouldn't say not a darth of success, but years of success, right? Or a track record of success doing it. 
They believed in them. They picked them. You have a guy like Byron Leftwich, who has been a short time period, has been really good. But for whatever reason, every time there's a successful African-American coach, there's always a qualifier. Oh, we got to see more. Well, Zach Taylor. Well, Sean McVay. Well, Kyle Shanahan. Well, I mean, come on. And then you have somebody. And then the other qualifier is, well, he's being coached by, uh, I mean, he's coaching Tom Brady. Well, let me wait a second. Did that stop uh, Josh McDaniels from getting a job just now? Did that stop, uh, uh, what's his name, Bill O'Brien from getting a job? Nobody said that about those guys. But when it comes to the black, the African-Americans, all of a sudden it's, well, he's, he's, he, he's coaching some of the best players. No stuff, Sherlock almost cussed. I almost got, but it's like no snap, Sherlock. If you're a good coach, you're gonna have good players. That's part of it. That's part of the equation. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to yell or anything like that, but it's very frustrating as a fan of the league. And Lowe's looking at me like, "Chill out, Chris." But like, no, no I'm, it's I, frustrating I as being a fan all. of the league and seeing the amount of color there is in the league. And then you look at the executives, you look at the owners, you look at the the head coaches, and it's not reflected. And they're definitely qualified candidates. And the last thing I'll say before I pass it back to you, you brought up the giant statement and it offended me because they use that word. We hired the best candidate, the most qualified candidate. No, you didn't. You didn't. And it's not a knock on Brian Dayball. It's not a knock on him because he may be a good coach. But the problem is you're not giving opportunities to guys that are actually qualified. The Texans are on the verge, probably not anymore after this lawsuit. They're probably going to swallow that and hire somebody else. They were on the verge of hiring Josh McCown, a guy who coached high school, never had a coordinating job. He's had three interviews with the Texans, and yet Eric Bieniemy can't get a job? Eric Bieniemy can't get a job, but Josh on, McCown think, can get three on, interviews. Hold on, Tom, 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 he's probably the only person willing to take that job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, but my point is... Like Eric Bieniemy, if you were to come to him today and say, "Hey, I feel I kind of feel bad for him because now he has this baggage to him, like he's done something wrong," and in reality, it's just that teams, these owners, don't want to hire him. It's really just that simple. It's like I really don't want to hire him, and it comes down to that. There's no, there's no accountability for the owners. The owners can do what they want. They own the team. They can hire who they want. Well, that's a problem, and I, th- I think the players need to do something about it. Because if it's 70% African-American and I'm not being coached by African-American head coaches, the players need to step up and do something about it because they can. They have the power to. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, the only thing players can do at this point is, you know, revolt and not play. And that's that's just not going to that's not going to happen. You Does know, it need to go too that far, though, be, bro? Do they, it, do, I mean, they do that? Well, I mean, what I mean, the players the players are going to speak out and and then potentially get traded or let go or whatever because there's going to be another qualifier and this person's a distraction. All these things it's going to have to be a collective thing. Um, yeah, and and, and again for the f- yeah and and for the only way for it to work is going to have to hit the NFL in the pockets, right? For me, um, I, I I I think that I think that awareness does need to be created. And I think this is a good way. Um, hopefully this doesn't end in Brian, Brian Flores never coaching again in the NFL. The guy's a good coach. The guy's done things to make the Miami Dolphins at least a respectable franchise. Okay. Over the last couple of years, cause he's built some kind of winning culture. You know, you just add some pieces around this team and then you're talking about the next Cincinnati Bengals. You see what I'm saying? Like you, 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 you're looking at this. This is what this kind of team is. Um, and it, it's, it's a mindset. This really just comes down to culture and the mindset and just this being what it is. It's a good old boys club. You got to have the connections. You have enough connections. You have one or two really good years. Or if you're a white superstar offensive coordinator, you know, as, as we, like you have, uh, the Mike McDaniels and, and the Kellen Moores and, and some of those. You, you talked about, you know, the, the current Rams head coach. You know, if you're this offensive genius, you know, they, they want you. You know, but you, you know, have the likes of Byron Leff. You've said something, and it has to be highlighted because it's very key. You just talk about these offensive coordinators being labeled as geniuses, right? And they're typically these young whitehead offensive coordinators. I've never heard somebody say Byron Left was just a genius. You never no. hear that. Eric Bieniemy is a genius. You don't. Never. You, don't. you never hear that. Mm-mm. That's frustrating. You know, for it, me. It, uh, it, it let is, me ask it you is a question. Yeah. Is there any chance? And you kind of answered it, but is there any chance that Brian Flores coaches again in the NFL? 
I, I don't know. Once I saw the lawsuit, the first thing I thought was, oh, well, that's the end of his NFL coaching career. Mm-hmm. That's just what I thought because you, you, you saw what happened with, 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 again, you saw what happened to Kellen. What's to prevent this from happening to Brian Flores? You know, who's going to say, oh, I'm going to give that guy a chance? You know, it's going to take a franchise that has been stable, that has good ownership, that's like, hey, we're going to give this guy a chance because we see that he's a good coach and what all these other teams did is messed up and we're going to give him a chance, right? I think I read somewhere in that article that, you know, he has an interview with uh, with New Orleans, right? It's, it's going to take a team with a stable, with stability, you know, that's going to be able to take that on, you know, be able to weather that storm, you know, but this 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 is real. This is real. And there's people out there that's going to look at it like, oh, just a bunch of other black guys talking a bunch of stuff about things that don't exist and things that don't happen. You continue to think that way. You continue to say those kinds of things because you're not the one going through it. You're not the one experiencing these things. And until you can walk and actually wear somebody's shoes. Matter of fact, there's a, there's a really good commercial. Actually, it's a terrible commercial, but the concept made a lot of sense. Okay. And it's a commercial that has Shaquille O'Neal, you know, that, that commercial that he does with the, uh, the general insurance. OK, there's a commercial that he does and it's him and a, and, a, and a lady, you know, Shaq wears humongous shoes. Right. And the lady, of course, she's smaller, petite and has tiny shoes. Well, the whole idea behind that commercial was you never know what someone is going through until you walk in somebody else's shoes. Shaquille O'Neal was wearing her shoes. His big ass was wearing her shoes and she was walking in his big old boat shoes. OK, so you don't understand what the experience is like until you are literally in somebody else's shoes. So for those who are thinking that we're, you know, manifesting things that don't make sense or manifesting things that aren't exi- that don't exist and manifesting and making up things that uh, 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 that that don't seem possible. Here we go. A bunch of other black guys and black people being angry about things. Listen, listen, once you actually you know, have a conversation, you really see what's really going on. You really understand, you know, the frustrations at seeing, you know, people that look like us go through these things on a consistent basis. It's not a one-time thing. It doesn't only happen in Alaska. It doesn't only happen in the South. It happens all across the United States. It ain't just black men. It's not just old black men. It's not just black women. It ain't just black kids. It's a whole it, it, it happened. This has happened to black people. This happened to people of color. Okay. Let's not leave, you know, Asian folks. Okay. Let's not leave Middle Eastern folks out. Okay. Let's not leave them out as well because I'm sure they're frustrated. I read, I read an article about a, an assistant Asian coach who was frustrated by the process as well. Okay. So it's not just happening to black folks. Okay. But this, this is, this is, this is real. This is real. This is, we're, we're in 2022. Okay. If we had this whole movement with George Floyd and everybody was able to come together and see that whole situation, how about we just open our eyes further and really see that this is going on? There's a whole bunch of old white men in the NFL who are running these things and they just want to hire, and, and they're more than likely, they're more than likely to hire somebody that they're more comfortable with. Okay. That comes with good references. And, 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 and someone has a relationship. So they're more comfortable to hire somebody that looks just like them versus doing something a little bit different and hiring, going with the coach and giving them a, a, a longer leash like Brian Flores, like Brian Flores. And let's not even talk about, let's not even talk about the Houston Texans head coach. Cause we also, we, we saw that coming. We all knew that was going to be a one year thing. We saw that coming, which is just completely jacked up. But anyway. I'm yeah, and you bring up a good point. Is and what you bring up is really organizations throughout the United States having to confront that, and many attempted to um, during the George Floyd uh, protests when obviously he was um, murdered. And I will tell you this, man, it, it does take a realization, but it takes some of these same old white men, right? So the thing is, I'm always careful. We're always careful because I don't, I don't think it helps. If we have white people who are uncomfortable to speak up, right? Because what happens is these same white people who are in power, and I'm just not just pointing out white people, just saying whoever's in power, what we want to do is we want to have them be comfortable to speak up because one, I want to know your position, but two, I want you to be comfortable enough to speak so we can get to a point where we can get to some real change. And one of the ways we do that in the NFL is really have the owners come out from the shadows and speak because they're the ones who are making these decisions, right? They're hiring these executives. They're hiring uh, these coaches. So maybe the NFL needs to take a look at it and say, you know what, owners, you own the team. You make the money for the team. But when it comes to the hiring of executives and head coaches, we're going to have some input because we've given you this input for years and years and years. And you have decided to use it 
in ways that it's not wise. Because this is an ugly light on the NFL coming up on the Super Bowl. Tom Brady, your best player, definitely your best quarterback, ever just retired. And all of a sudden, his story is not the number one story. This is. And it doesn't make any sense. At some point, the NFL and its owners collectively, just like you mentioned, need to come together and decide what are we doing. The Rooney rule clearly doesn't work. Just trash it because it's garbage. What you need to do is have people who come in who look for people who don't look like them, right? It's just, the thing is, it makes an organization better. The reason why the Steelers have been great for so long is because they've been consistent in hiring people who think differently than the Roonies, who look differently than the Roonies. Why? Because it adds a different flavor to the locker room. It adds a different flavor to the organization, and which is how you have a quarterback, you you have a coach who's able to have 15 consecutive winning seasons. It takes ownership stability. And that's the reason why so many of these organizations are failing. You look at the Texans you mentioned. Ever since McNair died, I'm not saying he was a beacon of success, but ever since he died, his son's taken over. I think it's his wife's taken over as well. And it's just a mess. So they don't know what they're doing. They hire a guy in Jack Easterby. They hire a guy uh, in Nick Casario who are just kind of handling everything. And it's a complete mess. And that's what happens. Of course, Nick Casario is going to hire Josh McCown, right? That's what they're going to do. Now, I don't think Josh McCown's going to get hired anymore after this Flores thing. Because, I mean, the Texans, if they have any type of brains, they won't go that route. But it's just he should even be in the consideration. Is that is that is that, is that a real? Is that real? It's is real. It, is he, is, I mean, he's, he's had, actually on in the, the last two seasons, bro. He's had three, three, one, two, all three, three head coaching interviews. Eric Bieniemy, basically, the league had to force them to interview him, and it was even I think it was over Zoom. So. It just takes the ownership because that's where it comes to, right? It takes the ownership to make a decision on hiring. And I do want to say this, and I'll let you get the last word on this. Um, I'll let you get the last word on this. I just want to end my points on this. If you're a, a, a white person listening to this and you're uncomfortable, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with being uncomfortable. That's cool. I just want you to be able to speak up when you see something that's wrong. 70% of the players in this league are black. I said that already. But only one of the coaches is black. That makes no sense. Just It just doesn't, it inherently doesn't make any sense. And if it makes you uncomfortable, fine. But at the same time, New Channel Sports, and I can speak for myself for sure, I don't want you quiet. I want you speaking. Tell us how you feel. Um, one of the things I do hate, and I see it online a lot, I'm not saying this is white people. I think it's just people in general saying, well, they're hiring the best candidates. They're hiring people who are qualified. And that bothers me because you have a guy like Eric Bieniemy. I've never heard a coordinator not get a job because he's doing too good of a job with an outstanding player. I've never heard that. I've never heard somebody say we can't hire a Tom Brady coordinator because he coaches Tom Brady. So if we're going to talk about things, we got to keep it equitable. And so far from what I have seen, it has been anything but that. Yeah. Um, you know, it is an uncomfortable discussion and, and, you know, I mean, it, it, it is what it is, you know, and, and the facts are this and, 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 we're not privy to this. Uh, we're not, we're not, listen, I understand that, you know, you're, you're going to bring somebody on and group yourself with people you're going to be more comfortable with that look like you speak the same language, same language, have the same ideologies. That's just, that's how the world is, that's right? That's nature. how you have. Yeah. That's just human nature. Right. Um, but we, we, we just where we are now, we have to be able to say, Hey, you know what? Let's let's think a little bit differently. Let's look outside the box and let's really delve in, you know, to 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 the to the real figures, who this person is, human nature, um, what they're bringing to the table, and give somebody an opportunity, okay? Um, and not continue to do the same things over and over. Now, I do understand where the NFL is going right now. It's about new, right? What have you done for me recently, right? You know, Coach Dayball, bless his heart. I'm sure the great is a great. I've heard he's a great man. Um, the coaches have spoken, his players have spoken very highly of him, right? And you're coming from a team that has, you know, uh, that, that's had some success in the playoffs, you know? So, you know, it, it, it's, that's the new toy, right? That's the new, that's the new thing in town, right? So I, I understand the hiring of that, right? Um, but we just still have to take a look and say, you know, th- there's still not very many opportunities for these guys. Let, let me give this guy a chance, you know, and stop putting all these qualifiers that don't make any sense. You know, on, 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 on these, on these coaches, 
you know? And, and that's the thing. All this is just a progress stopper. And we're just looking for a way to move forward and, uh, and, and, and progress. Um, so that's all I got to say about that. I mean, again, like Chris said, I mean, don't, don't be afraid to speak up. Um, at the end of the day, you know, this, this, this is real stuff. This is real stuff. This is, you know, everyday life. These are things that, you know, we, uh, that, that, that people of color go through. That this is, this is real. Um, and the only thing that you can do to really, um, I guess, frustrate people of color, annoy people of color is by putting qualifications and not saying, Hey, you know what? I hear you. I understand. And I acknowledge, you know, this, you know what? Let me, let me take another look. And if all you're going to do is just cast a, a blanket over it and pretend it doesn't exist, then you're absolutely part of the problem. We'll, we'll end it just like that. I mean, there's nothing for me to add to that. Well said, sir. Very well said. Uh, guys, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. We really do appreciate you for taking your time, either in the morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever or wherever you're listening. We just want to say thank you. Uh, please continue to check out our podcast and support us. Check out our Instagram pages. Check us out on Twitter. You can also check out our website, newchannelsports.net. That's new channel spelled in you, channelsports.net. You can also check out our lovely faces on Afro Vibes TV, where we have a show on demand each and every single week. You can download the Afro Vibes TV app on your phone. You can download the Afro Vibes app on your phone, on your laptop on your tablet or on your television your roku or amazon fire stick you can also check us out on the leads podcast network the lead is spelled l-e-a-d apostrophe s the leads podcast network you can find new channel sports show we have a new show each and every single saturday uh, where we talk about sports on a different network we're killing it over there as well you can check out those podcasts on the lead sm.com as always, thank y'all for listening to us. Y'all have a good week. Lo, you want to sign us off, bro? Hey, have a great week. Uh, you know, y'all have a fantastic day. Blessings to you. Blessings to your families. Y'all be safe. And remember, just, uh, you know, live every day like it's your last. Thanks for listening to the new Channel Sports Podcast. If you like the show, feel free to leave a comment and a five-star rating. Your support is very much appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podbean, or on our website, newchannelsports.net. That's new channel spelt in you, channelsports.net. Got a sports-related question for the crew? Just leave a voicemail on our website. Till next time, have a good one, and stay safe out there.